Hi, welcome to the opensource.com weekly top five. I'm Jen and every week I bring you the best of what we published this past week. It's always five articles and it's always five of what we think are the best open source stories out there from around the globe. So let's hop into the top five. At number five, we have new open source dependency manager on the scene. Bycode is a startup that began with closed code, but has since made their work open source. You may have figured out by now, or maybe you know firsthand, that part of the process of transitioning a project to open source is building a community of users and developers around it. But before they could start exploring that option, they had to address their investors' trepidations in going open source. So see how that played out in the article. At number four, newsrooms see the light of open source. Vince Ryan is a journalist and lead at Source Fabric, project lead at Source Fabric. He makes the arguments, um, argument that newsrooms for online publications need an open source content management system to handle the varying media types as well as different types of media companies. The diversity present in today's newsroom needs a flexible system, one that can be modified and then owned in a sense by the team that built it. For more on this story, read about the new management suite of newsroom tools called Superdesk in this article. At number three, going open source on Android with F-Droid. Do you have an Android phone or other device? Scott Nesbitt asks, what choice do we have if we want to use Android and keep our apps as free and open source as possible? Well, we turn to F-Droid a catalog of false applications just for the Android platform. See how to install and get apps in this article. At number two, five favorite Raspberry Pi and Arduino projects. We often cover open hardware stories on the site. So what is open hardware after all? Frank Thomas Hockey says it means the components that make up the device are available for the user to see. No secret formulas. The ingredients are completely transparent, and if you choose, you can source the raw parts and assemble them yourself. So in this article, check out five of um, Frank's favorite projects that run on Raspberry Pi or Arduino platforms. Finally, at number one this week, we have the current state of video editing for Linux. Chris Long spent many years in the visual effects industry, and as a Red Hat Systems engineer, the question kept arising of whether there are good options for video editing tools for Linux. So he investigated. Take a look at what happened when he installed and tried to work with six different video editing programs, and ultimately, which one won out. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week.